everyone. Uh, this particular tutorial is going to be for those just starting out in painting. Uh, we're even going to trace out the object. It's just things laying around the house that sometimes may even be a challenge to make look interesting in a painting. Uh, but for that reason, the most obvious place to start uh, is just uh, from a photograph. And with cell phones these days, everybody has one, so they take very good pictures. So I would just suggest to work from some of your own photos, because while you're taking that picture, you're also retaining little mental notes of colors, textures, lighting, different things that may help you once you start the painting process. So with that said, let's dive in and see what we could work with. Okay, here's the uh, opening screen when you open up the uh, Rebel 5 Pro, but then keep in mind, I won't be using any of these special features in the Pro version, so you'll be able to easily do this particular type of tutorial with the standard version also. Now, what I will do though, is I just work on an 18 by 12 for this particular tutorial at 300 DPI. And sometimes the DPI is a little bit important compared to the size of your image, because then that way, if you try to keep them the same, when you import your image, you'll have a really good idea how big the photograph will be compared to your paper. If you want it the same size, if you want a little bit smaller, now you could drag out the size of the picture, but then just keep in mind, you might lose some quality as you drag it out larger and larger. So now what I will do is I will just click on my 12 by 18, but then I will go to the horizontal or landscape uh, aspect ratio, and then I will click on it. Now it'll be an 18 by 12, and then I will double click on my paper. And what I use is just the, the regular handmade, which is just a, a default paper uh, with, with the program itself. So there's nothing special there. And then I also use just pure white, which is right here, just six Fs. And then that way I'll get my brightest highlights I could get with pure white paper. Now what color and what sizes you use is obviously up to you, but then uh, just keep in mind, try to keep it as simple as possible so you know what to expect when you start using your colors and your brushes and the texture of your paper. I will hit okay there. And now that I got what I need here, the size and the paper and the DPI, uh, this is the DPI right here. And then just keep in mind, this is going to be a brief version of getting started. If you want a very uh, expanded version of what to do, then you may want to check out uh, the other getting started painting video I just put up. And I'll put a link up here. Uh, in the upper right hand corner uh, if you want to review all the different settings and then that's even not completely uh, everything you could go over but that's a very good way to get started so now we'll just hit OK and there's our paper and we're ready to start it'll just open up with layer number one and that is what we will convert to the drawing layer let's get started okay the first thing we're going to do is import our picture and that is just under file and then just import picture Im image right here. And then just go to wherever it is on your system. Here's several I have started. Uh, th the one we're going to do is right here. And this is the image right here. Now there's two of them. And I'll show you how much of a difference there is uh, just between the two photos. Uh, one was just under one single light. And the other one was out outside in daylight. And you'll see how much of a difference there is of the exact same subject. Uh, just difference in lighting. So we're going to open this one up. And this is about a 7 by 12. So it's technically 12 inches by 7 inches at 300 dpi. But the paper is 18 by 12 at 300 dpi. But we're going to leave it smaller just the way it is. So we have a little bit of room for a background. We can make this uh, a type of a vignette type picture. Uh, but we'll make it just a little bit bigger. And then we'll pull it this way a little bit. And we'll leave it right there. That looks fine. Just hit OK. And then now all I will do is drag this layer down to here. And then name our open layer drawing. Is go back to this one. And now we can make this one about maybe I would say 50% opacity just enough so we could see it. Uh, but then we'll be able to just outline it and get some details here and there. But we're just gonna roughly draw it in and uh, just to give us something to start with the paint from. 
but then we'll also make a mask out of it too. Uh, just to be able to make a mask out of it will help us whether we want to make a, a nice loose splashy background or if you want to just paint within the keys or the, uh, the keychain holder, then we could also do that. Uh, now what we'll do first is we're going to go ahead and start tracing this out and I'll go to a uh, fast forward speed painting for that. But in the meantime, uh, the visual settings are just set as just regular cold pressed paper and that's it. Uh, but I am going to turn off the drips because we're going to keep this one simple for now. And then we could maybe even add drips later if we want to. But we'll see how this goes first. We'll close that up. And then that's it. And now I'll go ahead and trace it out. Okay, before I start tracing this out, I just wanted to show you one little thing that I will be doing as I'm tracing it. And it will help you draw nice straight lines uh, if you need help. And what that will be is I will zoom in on a straight line that I will be using this for. And that would be this line right here and this line right here. What I'll be doing is holding down the shift key as I draw. Now the trick is to just start wherever you want to start your line and put your cursor right there or your brush. And then as soon as you have it in place, hold down the shift key and then you'll get a crosshair with a line that will move anywhere your actual uh, cursor will move. Then what you could do is then just line it up right with your straight edge, and then when you set it down, that's it. You'll be able to draw a nice sharp edge, straight edge, no matter where your cursor, you can see my cursor is going all over the place, but I'll still be able to draw a nice straight line on that straight edge. And to do it again, all I have to do is set my cursor down right here in the inside corner, Hold down the shift key, and then I'll take it the whole way out. And the best thing to do is to take it out as far as your line's going to be or as far as you could go, and then set it down. And then it's much easier to control your guideline that way. And then when you draw back to where you want to stop, that's it. Now you have nice two straight lines, and then you could do everything else freehand. But if you have a nice long straight line to work with, that might help you in your drawing. So let's go ahead and trace this out. Okay, now that we have our perimeter done, now is a good time to go ahead and make our mask because what we'll be doing is just filling in that outside perimeter and that is what will protect our keys and our key chain uh, if we decide to paint either within or outside that area. Uh, what I will do is actually go to the drawing, though we could still keep our drawing uh, separate from the mask. So I will just go down at the bottom of the right-hand corner of the layers panel, uh, just hit duplicate uh, the layer, and then I'll come up with drawing copy number one. I will double-click on that, and then just make that the mask. Hit enter. And then now that I have that as a mask area, what I will do is go up to my fill bucket, and I will select it right here in the uh, tools panel. And then I want to make sure it's continuous. I will click that one right there. And then I will use that same permanent rose color to fill it in because it doesn't matter what color your mask is because uh, we'll turn that layer off anyway. We won't see it at all uh, if we use it as a mask. Now all I have to do is click within that perimeter and it'll fill that uh, line up completely with solid color. Now if it fills up your whole page, then you may have a break in that outside perimeter line somewhere and you may have to look at it real close, uh, just uh, kind of scan all the way around the outside edge until you find that break. And once you close it up, then you'll be able to fill it in nice and solid. Now that I have that done, then what I could do is I will actually turn that layer off and we'll just leave it off for now because then we're going to go back in and finish our drawing and I will just speed draw that. Let's go ahead and finish our drawing. If you're completely new to painting and drawing, just consider tracing your photograph once you've selected it just to give yourself the opportunity to dive right into painting, colors, and water. Okay, now that we got it all drawn out, uh, this is the photo I wanted to show you. I will turn off the drawing just so it doesn't interfere. And then I'll go back to the photograph and turn it all the way up. And then you could see I had one light coming from the upper right hand corner. And this was just inside with no reflectors or anything. So uh, my point would be is even though these are shiny glossy keys, 
under the uh, particular lighting I used, uh, it was only reflecting the dark room that was around it. Now, if I open up my other one, here's the reference images right here. What I will do is I will go back and go right here to the window and then just hit reference images right here and this window will come up for you and then all you have to do is hit this button right here import new image and when i click on that it'll take me straight to my folder system again and wherever it is on your system uh, just look it up and i'm going to grab the brighter one this time that i photographed outside in daylight and you'll see what what a uh, difference it is i'll open that one up and then if i click on this one there it is there. Now you'll see what a difference these two are. And one was with just a, a hard uh, a light coming from the right. And this one is uh, even reflected light quite literally off the clouds. Because you could see there's even some blue in this. And that is literally the blue sky. And then all the, the real bright white colors, the lighter colors, are reflected of the clouds. Uh, that were outside that day and then uh, you can even see just a little bit of blue here and there We can put a couple of real light washes down uh, just to give us some kind of a, a base uh, Just background so to speak uh, But if you have any problems in your reference image and just say for example You actually want to know well when I start painting my colors I'd like to go from light to dark uh, and then that way uh, a darker color will always cover a lighter color in the most part Especially when you're working with transparent watercolors But sometimes it's a little bit difficult to, to actually tell which value is darker The easiest way to do that is just to actually just go to your grayscale button right here in your reference image Turn it on and it'll reduce everything to a grayscale and then that way you could easily see what colors are darker and what colors are lighter now all the chrome colors the nickel plated colors are coming out very white and then right down in here is actually where the brass was if i take this off then you could see where the actual brass is worn through the nickel uh, then all the uh, brass areas are reasonably darker than the actual uh, nickel itself. So what we would start off with is real light washes of just cool colors to give it that nickel look, uh, just like maybe cobalt violets, maybe uh, a light blue, and then go into the golds uh, that would be um, next because they are considered a little wee bit darker than the white. Now keep in mind, if we put it down any colors, uh, for some of these uh, chrome or shiny areas, they're going to be extremely light in opacity. So we have to watch how much we put down. But this will give us an idea uh, just as a starting point and how we can put it in. And all we're going to be doing is actually drawing with color. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's, what we could do next is we will actually make a palette out of this same picture too. And that will give us a start that we had a start tracing the picture and that got us good and what we'll do now is we'll go down here in fact i'll raise it up to make sure you could see it yeah there you go and then hit this button right here this menu on the color set panel and if i click on this then i'll go down and say right here where it says create color set from image file and what i'll do is let's just go with just 16 colors would be enough for this and if i go to hit 16 colors and then i'll open up that'll go to a folder system with that uh same folder system whatever you're using then find your uh, reference picture that you want to make that palette from and it's going to be the lighter picture this time and then i'll click on that and then there's our palette right there these are the colors we'll be using uh, this is obviously the brass color and keep in mind we could add colors to this if we want to if not uh, these would be enough colors to get us started uh, the darker colors this deep grayish blue uh, and these colors here the grays would be actually the colors of the uh, plastic keychain holder uh, and then this a little bit of a chrome here but then also if we open up our other one you could see how much of a difference when this now actually looks like chrome compared to this up here is just reflecting the very dark ceiling uh, when I photographed it inside with just one light on. So how uh, you photograph something or the photographic reference you're working from can make all the difference in the world whether something actually looks like chrome or not. Uh, we're going to put that aside because that's what we'll be working from. 
and uh, let's get this started and get ready to give it uh, just a couple of uh, base coat washes. Okay, before we start painting, the first thing we need to do is to actually make this the mask. And I'll go on that layer. Actually, we could uh, turn this off, and that would be it. And then I will go and open up the drawing. And then we can also go on the mask, and then all we need to do is just hover over the M, masking fluid layer, and then it'll give you an option of no mask, mask opaque, or mask transparent. Now it's going to depend on what we want to work on first. If we want to do the background, then we would mask opaque. And then that way uh, we could uh, actually uh, mask just what is actually painted. And then that way our background will be able to be painted on uh, and we could do it that way. Now, if you have a little dot here, that means it's an influence layer. So now what I want to do is we're not going to paint on the photograph at all. So I will actually go to that photograph and open up a new layer. Just call it background. And that's it. And then what we will do is influence that layer. And then that means it will uh, uh, take part of what that mask is trying to do. And that is to mask off the keys and the keychain holder. But now if we go up to the mask itself, we can completely turn that off. And that mask layer will still uh, work just as intended. But then also keep in mind if the drawing is a little bit too bright or too vivid for you, or uh, even if it's just distracting, you could go down and then even cut it back a little bit uh, down. Maybe uh, even 40 or so would be good enough for this. And that will just leave it like that. And that's just enough to just give us an idea uh, where everything is at. Now, if we go to our background layer, it's an influenced layer. And we have our mask on. If we actually go to it now, let's uh, pick some of these colors. In fact, what we could do is we'll put this right here and we'll take this and I will move it over here and we can even, so we're not going to use the tilt or the navigator for a while so we'll just put it right there just to give us a rough idea what we're doing and uh, we can actually then I will actually be able to show you that then this is uh, just a basic wash that we're going to put over everything. Now, if you want to go through the keys, the keys we have to keep fairly light. If we want to make the dark, uh, darker background, uh, then we should protect the keys. The 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 keychain holder is black. We wouldn't have to worry about that. But since we want to keep the keys fairly light, what we could do is put in a darker background and make the keys look even lighter because you can't have light without dark. So if I actually go now to my watercolor brushes. And then I'll even use some of the colors we have here. And then we'll use, I'll go back down here so I can see all my brushes. We'll go back down here and then maybe just grab some grays and blues. Uh, just this one right here. And we'll put the opacity up. Now, if you want a nice loose wash, what we could do is then actually um, wet the layer right here under the drop down layers panel. We'll wet uh, the entire layer. We could verify that by hitting our show wet. And then now you can see what's all protected and what's not. This The blue area is the show wet area. That's what we'll be painting, and it is wet. So our colors will bleed out and, and do uh, uh, the nice uh, mixing of what water can do for it. And then we'll do the bloom, and I'm going to make it much bigger. But I'm just going to put a little wee bit of color down at a time and a lot of water. And we'll start with this gray. And then we'll just go right around and we'll just leave some of these bleed in. Now, if you want, what we could do is if we need more time for this, we'll pause the diffusion right there. And then now it'll stop. So now we have all the time in the world to put our colors down. And I can even uh, put a little wee bit of this yellow right in here, right around the keys, just as color unity. And then we will actually grab a little bit of the darker gray. And then we can make it a little wee bit darker right in here where that shadow is going to be from the keychain itself. 
and we'll take some of this gold and put it just out in here and then now we'll just let all these mix together and again you got to be patient because what it's going down and what it'll end up will be two completely different things and we'll take the, the paws off and we'll leave the water do the work and you can see it's starting to uh, feather out and then it, we're getting some nice uh, texture there uh, if uh, we leave it go for a while we'll see what we get and we'll just leave a subtle pattern to it if we want and then keep in mind we could do several of these backgrounds because once you have the mask made then you could take as many tries as you want but if it blooms out and we like it we could leave it And that's what will actually give the watercolor look itself. Now keep in mind, if you really like what's happening, as far as the bloom goes, you could fast dry it, and that would be just a letter F on your keyboard shortcut, and then hold it there. But then anything else you do to the background, do it on a separate layer so it doesn't affect what you wanted to save. That way you can even have a couple variations of a background if you want. Uh, we're going to leave that right there like that, and we'll quick dry that. And then what I'll even do is I might even take some colors back over it and just let them bubble out, and we'll see what happens, because I can undo to a certain extent. And we'll leave that go brighter. Where the keys actually are, and I'm just waiting on the colors to mix. We're doing this in real time. And then that way where the keys are uh, will look lighter if we make a darker background because the keys are pretty shiny up in here. If you look at our reference, they are pretty uh, highly reflective that uh, that just uh, uh, they're not quite white, but they're, they're, they're pretty close to it. It's like a pale, very pale yellow almost. Uh, we're getting some interesting effects there. And again, you have to be patient. Uh, give her uh, water and colors a chance to mix. And what they're doing is mixing all together. And we're getting some very uh, neutral colors, so to speak. I'm going to leave that there. And we'll quick dry that and leave it there. And then now we could even go back in and just start roughing in the keys uh, as to uh, how we can uh, just start putting some very light washes down of the, uh, the light pale blues and then the pale yellow, and then go into some of the darker colors, and then we'll leave the keychain for last. Okay, now we can start working on the keys. The first thing we'll need to do is actually just make us a key layer, and I will do that right now. And then we will actually go up to the mask layer, and now we have to reverse it. We go to the mask layer, instead of uh, masking the opaque we're gonna mask the transparent and now that will only let us uh, work within our key area now we go back to the keys and since it's an influenced layer it will uh, acknowledge that uh, mask and then what we could do is just start giving some light washes and then keep in mind if this bloom is a little bit too strong for us or if we need to tone it down or whatever since it's on its own layer we could also adjust its opacity also and then tone it down a little bit but we'll get all our shadows in and everything else in and see how everything looks together and then we could fine tune uh, each individual uh, character of, of the painting itself. Let's go in and get, get some of these uh, right here done. And what we'll do is we'll just start putting in some real light washes of that gold. And then uh, that we could almost put on everything. And then when we start looking at a painting like this, I will actually zoom in just a little bit so we could see better. Uh, sometimes what you might want to do is then also just come up with some kind of a game plan as to... Uh, what we're going to paint, not paint, what we might just paint over and then lift out with an eraser later. Uh, it's it's kind of pretty much common sense that if it's uh, going to be easier to just paint over everything and then just pull out some highlights uh, with an eraser later, that might be a lot easier than trying to paint around all those things. I'll move this down here a little bit and then we'll put in some washes of the keys 
we're going to grab this color right here this cream color and we're just going to go ahead and and this is not wet and this is really light and again i can actually uh lift this out later but once we start putting in our different colors and then I'm going to go with a little bit of blue. Now this blue right here, I'm actually going to pick that blue and I'm going to add that. So all I have to do is that's a real nice vibrant blue that we can put across our chrome. And then I'll just add it right here to our colors. Now it's a part of our colors. And we'll keep that vibrant blue uh, just for some blue highlights here and there uh, on some of the keys and then on the, uh, uh, the keychain holder itself. Uh, let's see we'll put in fact we could even put some of that in right now we'll take the uh, size way down but we'll keep it about the same opacity and we'll grab that blue right now and then we'll just put some right in here and we'll leave it a little bit rough and then I always have my finger on the fast drive button just in case I want to stop it right there. Put a little bit down in here. And these keys have a subtle texture to them, so we'll even put some on this one right here, this blue. We can't go too dark or we'll start losing the lightness of it. Keys, we'll grab this gray here. Put that right in there. Now once we start putting in our hard edges and our detail, that's where we'll I'm going to quick dry everything right where it's at now so I know where it's, everything is at. Make this a little wee bit more bluer. I just quick dried that. And then we'll put a little bit of blue on this one. Let that bleed out a little bit. And then you can see the uh, this tip right here is pretty dark. And that dark up against this light now will actually work pretty good. I'll start with this color. And actually, I'd rather give it several light coats than one real dark coat. I can control that better. And then if I like the texture it has, I will definitely, I can undo it, let it start over, and then quick dry it. And then that, that way, I'll get another chance at it. And we will go a little wee bit darker now. And again, we are we don't have to worry about painting out here because we got our uh, mask on. And then I'll take some of these even darker yet. But we'll go here and there. And then now let's just start blocking in some of all these yellows just to start us off here. And I'm going to go to a different brush. I'm just going to go to a regular wet mop. And about right there, not nah, a little bit small, yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, now we're going to put some right in here. And I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. I fast dried that. And this edge right here, fast dried that. And then we're going to put some down in here. I'm quick drying it fairly quick because I got a fairly loose brush. And some of these areas, if I go down in this area down here, I'm not worried about that because that's going to go quite a bit darker anyway. And then the same thing with the edges. If I do the edges now, uh, that's no big deal because they got to go quite a bit darker. And that's that script work at the very end is we'll, what will actually... Now you see how quick that bled out. Uh, and that, that script work at the end is what will really uh, make things come together. And then there's even a little wee bit of tips here and there. And then we'll put some right in here. And then a little bit right in here. And this is a challenge for you too as far as uh, working with Two different pictures, drawing from one and coloring in from another. Which which you want to be able to think. And that, that's what will get your 
creativity going. I'm going to put a little bit of this here and there because we'll be going darker on these edges. And if I want, I go straight to a blend brush and I can even feather this out a little bit or rough it up, make any kind of texture I want or more importantly need. And then let's see, we'll take some of this, even that same, take a light gray. And I'm going to actually take a real fine texture and just kind of dust it over this one. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Yep. We're going to let that bleed in just a little bit. And then if it's too strong, I can even take my blender and, and just destroy it a little bit. Turn up the opacity. And I'll get rid of that, that uh, bloom a little bit if I want to. Just soften up a little bit and leave a very subtle texture there. And then once we start putting in all the highlights and the edges and what have you, then we're going to cut the water completely down and not let it uh, bleed at all. We're going to go to our darker gray, but then we're going to actually change again. We're going to drop this down some. And, well, actually, we'll, we'll leave it up and do some of our lines already. You can use the shift key here too, but I like to try and go freehand. And I'll go back over these. And sharpen up some of those edges. And that's where the, uh, and then plus keep in mind, we could also go back in with an eraser and sharpen up some of the edges. That if you're going to trace an object, uh, make sure it, it's, it's a, a traceable object. Meaning that it's going to have a lot of sharp edges to it and a nice detailed object that you could work, really trace from. In other words, tracing from a, uh, a furry animal would be pretty tough. Oh, we're going to do that. And then I'll just put a soft wash down first. And remember, as long as you're touching, nothing's going to happen. And then once you uh, let go, that's when it's going to start mixing. And then I'll come back in and pull out some highlights here and get some hard lines here and there. Uh, we're going to actually uh, paint this just a little. We might even be able to put a little wee bit of blue in that. I'll let that bleed out. There we go. Quick dry that. And it'll just give us some very subtle shapes in there. Uh, and then let's see. We can make this darker now. Leave that there. And then what we'll do is we'll start going back in. Let's see. I'll do this shape here. Quick dried that. Right in here, some hard edge. And I can go back in and straighten that out a little bit, a little bit harder. Because it's nice to have some soft edges. It ties the things together and then put some hard edges next to it to define them a little bit further. But that depends on how you want to uh, do it, whether it be loose or tight or anything in between. And then these edges are going to be fairly dark too. And again, we could go back in and pull some of that out. And this is going to be a little bit, and then I'm going to feather that out just like that. And I quick dried that. And then let's stop there and see what we got. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got done so far. Uh, we're just starting to block in the, the uh, uh, preliminary colors and shapes. Uh, one thing we could already note that if the background is a little bit too dark, since we have it on its own layer, we could definitely just uh, cut back the opacity on that layer and then lighten it up. But we'll see how we go as far as how dark the keys actually end up. Uh, we can kind of 
artificially darken them a little bit uh, just to give them a little bit more uh, substance and form, so to speak. Uh, then that way uh, we will always have that option if we want to make the background a little bit lighter or by even doubling it over can easily make it darker. So we'll keep those things in mind. Let's move into some speed painting and get the keys completely done. We are doing this particular watercolor in a more traditional way, just constantly going to a darker value or color. In this way, we are building up on what colors we've already laid down and that creates the surface texture that we are trying to achieve. In traditional watercolors, if the color is still wet, you can use something as simple as a tissue paper to lift out water and color. If the paper is already dry, then an electric eraser and an eraser shield does a great job in pulling out small highlights. In most cases, they are much easier to do later than to try and paint around. In digital, we have plenty of options to actually pull out colors, select areas, or even just go back later and change the opacity of the layer. The trick is to keep all your objects on individual layers so you can adjust them as the painting comes to a completion. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got the keys pretty well uh, just blocked in and, and I did uh, bring in that vibrant yellow. I think it's much better than just a pure white as the highlight for some of the brass areas of the uh, keys. And then also what we're gonna do next is we will actually uh, just do uh, our uh, keychain holder itself. We're gonna turn on the drawing. We'll actually bring it up a little bit. And then now what I'm going to do is use the freehand tool and actually just draw right around it. You can see now we have to watch with this key. This key section right in here is still a drawable area since I will be able to paint now only within that uh, permanent rose color area. That's the keys and the uh, keychain holder itself. So what I have to do is when I draw this line here, I have to make sure I take it just out past the key itself and then I could go anywhere after that because our original mask will keep uh, all the grays and, and blacks and dark blues within that mask area. Let's do this right now. I'm gonna start right here and we're gonna just go right down this line and we're going to go right past the key and then as soon as we get past the key we could just go out in here and that is it and that's all we have to do and these edges right here will actually be protected by the original mask but now since i just made that line right there i could invert this selection and then just paint this chromy area here which is right here this area right in here so i could go ahead and take my nice uh uh, vivid light grays and then maybe that that real vibrant blue just as a hint of sky like down here But I want those nice and smooth because that that's more of like a mirror finish that shouldn't have any texture in it at all So let's go ahead and do that and what I will do is just grab I'm gonna grab a soft brush and That's this one now we'll go with the bigger one and then I'm gonna have a little wee bit of water in it so the uh, actual colors uh, bleed together and we'll start off real light and we're going to go with this uh, blue here and then you will see that now what in fact what we could do is we'll actually make this a, a separate layer we'll just call it the old fob and then I will influence that layer too and then now we could uh, just start painting this in right here so it is actually well first I have to invert it and then now I can only paint in this area here. And then you can see that uh, the outside edge is being protected by our original mask area. And I'll just get a little wee bit of coat. And then down here at the bottom, this is going to be a little wee bit darker. I'll quick dry that just so it stays where it's at so it doesn't interfere with our key ring. And then I'm going to take a little wee bit of an edge right here and then let that bleed just a little bit and then dry that and we'll do the same thing just to make it look a little wee bit rounded 
dry that and then we could even go to a blender and that's just right here just a blend straight blend and if we want to just soften that edge so there's no hard edges and then what we could do is actually uh, this right in here is going to be a little wee bit different than our original drawing so we can actually uh, even turn the original drawing back on and then you could see uh, the original photograph I should say that you could see then it's it, the ring goes down in but this one here you could actually see down in through it to the paper where this one is on such of an angle that you can't see it so we're just going to just make it darker and that's it I will actually go with this color right here but I'm going to take it a little wee bit darker but we're also going to make it a little wee bit smaller and then we're just going to color this in just like that and we'll add a little bit of shape and contours to it once we get our actual first color I want to the blender right now we'll just soften that up and then we're going to go a little wee bit darker on the bottom so I'll go sit with this one Watch the keychain down there because the key ring itself that's still a workable area. And then we're gonna make that a little wee bit darker on top. And it will be getting reflected light from the paper. Because I just have this sitting on just a regular sheet of notebook paper. That's all I use for the background when I photographed it with my cell phone. And then we're going to put in just a little wee bit of, let's go with the darker gray, right along that edge right there. And then what I want to do is put a little stripe of blue right across here. And I am actually uh, quick drying it every now and then. Okay, that's it. And then we're going to put some real hard lines in that also. And that will help with the, uh, uh, that would be good there. And I'm going to go real dark for this one. We'll even zoom in a little bit. And we don't have to make it a solid line the whole way around. We could break it up here and there. Quick dry that. Quick dry that, and then let's see. We're going to make another little wee reflection right here. Oh, wait, where's it at? There it is. We're going to go with that color. Okay, we'll let that go there. And we're going to make this a little wee bit darker there, too. Back in here. And I'm going to make that real dark. And then we're going to make that edge right here just about white. And now I'm just blending it in and feathering it out. We'll start there and see what we got. And then we're going to turn off the drawing. Okay, and then now what I'll do is I'll put a hard line right there in between the two that would be kind of like a where the two pieces were joined that's not bad and then now what we could do is this area here and I'll zoom out for that and I got to go back up and hit the actual uh, just the invert selection again and now I'll only be able to work within this area and what I could do then is actually start a little wee bit lighter I'll put our actual drawing back on. This right here, from this line down, is going to be a little wee bit brighter because it's angled down towards the paper, and the paper will be reflecting a little bit back up into it. Now, what I'm going to do is actually go to my bloom, and this, this is a pretty good texture for this. We'll start off light. I want very little water because I don't want the pattern to disappear too quick, and we will start with a lighter color. And then here's what we're going to do. 
we're going to go all over the place just like that and give it a nice even coat and then fast dry that oh, I'm going to actually undo that and then quick dry it before well still not quick enough there we go now I'll, now I'll leave it there and then now what I could do is actually I'm going to take some water out of it in fact and I'm also going to dry the layer because I don't want the colors to bleed too much I'd like to keep a texture there so I took all the water out and I dried the layer so now what I'm going to do is actually take the brush down in size so I can work a little wee bit tighter and then go to a darker color and I'm going to go right along this edge And then now I could do the whole entire thing, but I'm, I'm actually going to be stuck with this size brush. Let's see. We can feather it together. Quick dry that. And what I'm going to do is actually just texture it up a little wee bit. I softened it just a little bit because we're going to put another coat on it darker. And then you'll see what I'm going to do with my sand brush that will really make the difference, should anyway, in the end. All right, we'll quick dry that. I'll dry that layer. And then now we're going to go with the real dark. And I'm going to try and do this nonstop. And then I want to go right around the edge that's going to be darker. And we can lighten up the bottom a little bit if we have to. Quick dry that. And we'll get this where we want it to. Quick dry that. And then now I'm going to actually, uh, let's see, cut this down a little bit. And I'm going to take this even darker yet right around the edge where it's rounded just like that we'll quick dry that and now we're going to go to our sand brush uh, he's real small but we're going to use it as an eraser and the opacity we'll try a light first and we're going to give it a real fine texture like that real subtle pebble finish that the plastic has we could do the base yet the bottom we may even go into a speed painting for that but just to give you a rough idea what I'm doing now and how we're getting this done we'll do it this way yeah that's a start okay before I go into the speed painting I just want to show you one last thing and that is I'm going to go ahead and put the shadows in too, but I want to just show you how I'm going to do it. And that is these keys, this key right here, I'll make it a little wee bit bigger. This key right here is just sitting a little wee bit up off the paper back here because of the key ring itself. And then this key is one key above, this key is two keys above, and then this fourth key is three keys above the paper. Now what I mean by that is these shadows are going to taper from the point back in towards this way so in other words this one's going to be wide here a little bit less wide a little bit less wide than that and then just barely just a subtle shadow and that's it so in other words i'm not going to make identical shadows because they are sitting in different angles and different heights above the paper and then this one here uh, for the uh, keychain holder itself i will just put a subtle shadow right around it and it'll be uh a little bit more bluish uh, than this one because you can even see the difference and that is depending on the photographs themselves too uh, but we're going to go ahead and put those in and we are going to go ahead and finish up the keychain holder and we will be done let's speed paint this up okay as i'm doing the actual keychain holder just keep in mind this tutorial is just to show you several different ways or options you could do try to keep as many options as you can for yourself just to be able to fine-tune your painting towards its completion 
Okay, looks like we're just about done with this one. Uh, this is what we ended up with the keys. And I went ahead and lightened up that blue just a little bit, uh, just so it wasn't a very thick layer of solid blue. And then the uh, keychain holder, uh, this is the texture I ended up with, and I was pretty happy with that for now. Now, we can always go back in and find two different things here and there, especially when we keep things on their own layers. But now, what I wanted to emphasize the most in this particular tutorial was the importance of your actual photographs you're going by. Here is the one we actually used to paint from and I went ahead and let's open up that other one right here this is the dark one and if we open this one up I just want to show you the difference of these two photos side by side now if I wanted a dramatic lighting situation I would use the one on the left but then look at the keys if I wanted a nice shiny key set up where I'm really showing off the surfaces and the worn textures of the keys, then I would use the one on the right. Now, with that in mind, then sometimes when you're painting something and it doesn't always come out like you think, it may not be your painting. It may be the type of reference you're choosing to use to portray or render those surfaces. Now, with that in mind, that is also why we could use and should use sometimes in transparent watercolors an actual mask now we were masked off that just like this there's our original mask then we were able to go back and forth but with that mask let's go back to our background layer and if I select that and then hit the move tool if I start moving around my background layer then you'll actually see the background colors and patterns easily come through those keys now, they're not going to come through the keychain holder too much because it's a pretty dark black already. But as far as where I actually can move it around over the keys themselves, because there is such subtle light washes of color over the keys, then we would have to protect them from our background. Otherwise, we can actually, as another option, go back to our mask, turn it on, and then just hit the selection key and the magic wand and select that area and then I could turn this off and then go back to any layer I want and erase within that area if my background is coming through. That is just another option to actually handle colors or patterns coming through an object that you may not want. But with that said, this one is pretty well done and I hope you've enjoyed this particular tutorial. And again, until we see you out in the field or at the studio, thanks for watching.